two months ago, I turned... Oh, two months ago, I turned 13. How, according to many sites I use, however, I turned 26. It's a little odd, so here's why. <laughs> On October 21st, 1998, Congress passed a law called the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. This law, abbreviated COPPA, was intended to prohibit the gathering of data of children. By data, however, they mean, quote, any other identifier that the commission determines permits the physical or online contacting of a child. This means that websites aren't allowed to look, collect data that can be used to contact me. What this really means, though, is that I can't use the internet. As an example of this attitude, every year in school, we get a talk about the internet. This usually falls along the lines of, everyone is out to get you, and you can never be safe on the internet. Just turn off all of your computers and go back to the good old days of using chalk as a calculator. <laughs> this has been proven to be untrue. First of all, chalk is really bad at math. Second of all, I'm on the internet and I'm not out to get me. While yes, it is true that, that there are people who might try to hurt you on the internet, that's true of everywhere. This fear-mongering accomplishes nothing except to undermine the administration's credibility. To finish this anecdote off, you should probably not scream out your personal information on the internet, but you should also not start wearing a tinfoil hat. You may not have noticed, but the internet is centered around communication. Putting aside the fact that that is literally the way the internet works, a lot of the internet is made up of communication tools. To write this talk, I had to use Gmail, which I wasn't supposed to use, and to get compensated for the talk, I'll have to go to the bank with an adult because I'm not allowed to access my own money. Everything that the web ensures the ease of is kept out of the hands of truthful kids. Now, lying is usually considered a bad thing. It's really easy to check a box that says, I am 13 or older. This may not seem like a big deal, but as adults are always saying when it comes to lying, it's the principle of the thing. So, why do we force kids to lie to participate in society? As an example, when I was younger, around age seven or so, I played a completely online game. The game was aimed at children, and because it was specifically aimed at children, they followed a certain clause in the COPPA code that said that collecting information from children is fine as long as you have verifiable parental consent. This meant that you could go ahead and tell the game that you were six as long as you had an adult be the person receiving your email. Did not go this route, opting instead to just say that I was 13. This website acted like it cared about child security, going so far as to prevent you from typing any number whatsoever into the chat feature. The program censored out any word numbers such as two or 55, and they even let you enter Arabic numerals into the program. This created a problem because as any three-year-old would tell you, numbers are important if you have a question of quantity. <laughs> we ended up just putting spaces between each letter and numbers, like T space W space O. So it's supposed to prevent kids from sharing their ages, but just ended up being a hassle for everyone and doing nothing to address the real problem. The main cause of these restrictions stems from how the media and most of the world sees us. It is like non-sentient piles of meat that occasionally cry. Most outlets will say they like us and support us, which includes the government, but that's all not really true because if they actually liked us, they would treat us like people. Can't put all the blame on them, though, because we're only recently living in a world where we aren't literally being sold. It turns out kids are actually capable of stuff, though. For example, one of my friends is an avid coder with a popular add-on for Kerbal Space Program. As another example, when I was 10, I got my first Linux machine. I ran into a few hiccups when I decided to mess around with some files, so my friend taught me how to make backups. A while later, another issue corrupted an important file, but my last backup was a week ago, where my file hadn't even existed yet. I was deeply saddened, so my friend told me she would teach me how to use cron the next day. When she arrived, she saw that I had already set up cron tests to do a daily backup and had directed it to a cloud storage system. Even if they're not flashy stories like these, the kids don't usually just sit there at like blobfish and cry. So, at end, we restrict access to the internet for a future generation because we do not believe anyone younger than 13 is capable of making decisions or thinking for themselves. This can be changed, though. Just treat kids as real, sentient people capable of feelings and decisions. Here's what you can do. First of all, if you have a kid, teach them to be judicious about their lies. Only let a little bit out. They still shouldn't tell people their names, ages, or addresses, but talk with them about the sites they do want to access. Second, lobby and vote against laws that prioritize autonomy, uh, that prioritize safety over autonomy. Security theater benefits no one, and in this case actually hurts everyone. 
I said, Sarah Duvall, talk to us like people, not like security vulnerabilities. What she teach us the baseline of safety takes some time to learn about what we're doing, not because you're the parent police, but because we are all digital citizens together. Uh, any questions? Hi there. Um, when I was your age, I remember uh, having a lot of frustration online because so many sites wanted to have some kind of, uh, of payment information. You know, there's all these games and different communities that want to have some kind of ID, some kind of credit card, and those things are largely invisible to me now because I have my own uh, you know, bank account and I just kind of breeze through those things. Um, is, is that something that you still see a lot? Is that something that you're frustrated with or has that gotten better? Yeah, I do run into uh, things asking for my credit card info a bunch. Um, the main way, way I get around this is my parents just let me use it, their credit cards. Um, I'm curious at school how much your teachers um, expect you to be online or able to access information online and the restrictions that you're running into and that you talk about in your talk, how much does that impede you getting to learn? Um, it doesn't impede me so much because I just lie all the time. Uh, but uh, actually, in our school, we have about 30 Chromebooks for every class, and we have uh, school-sanctioned internet accounts, so I'm not entirely sure how that fits in with this law. I would like to say that uh, I, I'm his parent, and uh, the school does not ask me about what he accesses online, so they're acting in loco parentis in a really funny, fuzzy, gray area because the... The, uh, the school has a bunch of restrictions on what they can access, but I don't know what they are. So you talked about kind of online lying about your age to kind of get around the ageism of the industry. How do you kind of deal with that in real life, face to face with people? Uh, for the most part, in real life, I just say my age and it's pretty normal thing for uh, kids to lie about their ages on the internet, so. I just, I'm kind of curious, um, so you seem like a very savvy young man, and when I was a kid, I was kind of more the uh, believe, trust people and believe kind of what they tell me, especially my, my older brother, for some reason I was inclined to trust him. But um, <laughs> I was wondering from your perspective, are there any safety measures that adults should take or could take? Um, do you have thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I said earlier that uh, it's really important to make sure that your kids know that uh, you do have to be smart about what lies you make. Because you, you, it's okay to lie about your age, but it's another thing completely to completely make up another person or, imper or impersonate someone which you don't want to do. Hi, uh, have you sought employment? And if so, are child labor laws another area of discrimination? Uh, yeah, I can, uh, a lot of time I find a bunch of companies that I really want to work for, but I'm a couple of years under the uh, age where I can actually get jobs, so it makes me a little sad. Hi, have you been working on open source projects to contribute to your body of work just so that you build a, a reputation? And also, have you heard of the person, I forgot um, his name, who worked on Firefox when he was in his uh, teens? Um, so uh, I do, uh, do uh, open source contributions sometimes, uh, not a lot. Uh, but um, no, I haven't heard of that uh, person on uh, who's worked on Firefox. But I do have a, fr a good friend who does do a lot of stuff in that field. Um, I realize this might be an unknown for you, but what are you going to do? You know what you're going to have to do when you do reach an age where you are, where you don't have to lie about your age anymore. Are you going to be able to go back and edit your age in your online accounts, or are you going to have to completely remake your online presence? Mo uh, most sites that I've found do let me 
uh, go back and change uh, what my age is, but I've chosen that I don't really want to do that because it's easier to just be seen as an adult rather than a teen. So a lot of schools and education departments have kind of been talking about how to fix this pipeline problem and get more kids into jobs and technology. Have you seen any change at your school trying to get more kids interested, um, more involved in learning to do code? Uh, yeah, in my school particularly, we have about uh, three classes, no, four classes that I know of uh, that are trying to get kids into, to be more technologically savvy. Uh, but uh, the problem is a lot of the teachers who teach them aren't technologically savvy. 